I think it really goes back to the fact that when Taliban came back to power in 2022, since then, Tehrike Taliban Pakistan, which is an extension of Taliban originally, but then it took hold within Pakistan, they have been based in Afghanistan and they cross the borders and target Pakistani uh, different places, especially the northwest part of the country. And that's meant that the incidence of terrorism has increased. The trouble is that it's not just simply TDP, but it's also Islamic State that's also conducted attacks in Pakistan. And the Pakistan government was under the impression, especially under Imran Khan, that now the shackles of slavery have been broken and so things would be good, would be friends with Afghanistan. As it turns out, Taliban government in Afghanistan really is playing a very difficult game. I would say some even argue it's a double game. And so they talk about fraternity, brotherhood, but they don't stop TTP from attacking Pakistan. And so therefore, Pakistan government has really engaged in this policy that at one level, they are trying to show that Pakistan would not put up with such indirect or direct or implicit support for TTP but also to tell people within Pakistan uh, that the government is in control of the situation. And I think that's therefore working at different levels. One is for the neighbor, but also one for the Pakistani people themselves. Yeah, but who have become concerned about the sort of rising terror attacks. What sort of response have we seen from Afghanistan? Well, but Afghanistan uh, at some stage got very annoyed. And I think, again, because they moved between being very cagey about it, but then also trying to befriend Pakistan. So on the, uh, yesterday or day before, they had a meeting with the uh, Pakistani ambassador in Doha. And I think that's where they were trying to indicate that they were still friendly and brotherly. But at other times, they've also indicated that they won't put up with this. But because of this mixed messaging, but also because the situation itself is so volatile, uh, I think Pakistan government has also focused on what is known as Istikama Pakistan, which is protecting Pakistan and making it strong. And they've made it very clear that they're going to target terrorist activities, so blanket coverage, uh, and they would not just simply target terrorism emanating from across the border, from Afghanistan, but also any local terrorism and extremism. Yeah. So the program that has just been approved by the, the government and really being run by the military includes a whole lot of facets, which is not just simply kinetic approach or targeting terrorism, but also looking at countering terrorism, countering extremism. Uh, but then it raises a question among people in Pakistan as to how many of such uh, programs Pakistan can afford, mm. uh, because there's been a history of the military engaging in such activities. And they have been successful because at one stage, terrorism was really uh, very high in Pakistan. And then the military's approach really brought it down. But the fact that it's come up again has really created fear among people, particularly in the areas where incidence of terrorism has increased, that if the military comes in and is targeting, let's say, TDP, infiltrators, what would that do to the local residents? Yeah. Um, yeah. Because internally displaced people, how would, would that happen? If it does, what would happen with them? Who would take care of that? So there's a whole lot of issues that are involved in this. Yeah, so it's quite a ripple effect. Let's turn now to mm. the legal battles of the former Prime Minister Imran Khan. I mean, we've had this call from the United Nations. Is it going to place any pressure on the government to um, perhaps release him, perhaps, you know, I mean, so many people say a lot of these legal issues are politically motivated. Look, definitely, a lot of these legal issues are politically motivated. Two of the cases that have already, uh, Imran Khan has got reprieve, including also his wife, uh, were also uh, announced, uh, the verdicts were announced for that. Uh, just before the 8th of February election. So it was very clear that the government backed by the military was not interested in Imran Khan coming back to power. 
Now, the fact that Imran Khan's party, even though it didn't con uh, contest elections on its known symbol, the bat, the reality is that all the so-called independents who really stood on PTI supported tickets, they got voted in. And now they've engaged in this very interesting phenomena of joining hands with an Islamist group on the understanding that they have some common themes. So as a result of that, what we find is that there's a recognition, even by people who don't support Imran Khan, to say that what's happened in Pakistan really requires democracy to be given clear space, level playing field. And so from that point of view, uh, they do question whether keeping Imran Khan in jail on cooked up charges, even though they haven't been proven either way, is that the fair thing to do or not? Yeah. But if I could just add another bit to that, I think we also need to see that it's not peculiar to Imran Khan. If we look at Pakistan's political history, mm -hmm. especially in the last eight years or so, every government that is in power that is afraid of some contender coming up and then taking them out of power tends to engage in this. And often the military collaborates with these groups or the military starts a process where the other side is incarcerated on cooked up charges. So the former prime minister Nawaz Sharif, he was in jail, his daughter was in jail, a whole lot of other members of his party were in jail, and Imran Khan was quite okay with that. In fact, he supported that process. But now the same thing has happened to Imran. So when we look at and say what's happening to the UN working group on the de arbitrary detention talking about Imran Khan's incarceration, there's some people who are saying that it's actually not the UN speaking per se. Uh, it's the pressure that has been mounted by mostly overseas Pakistanis who are very pro Imran Khan to draw attention to what's happened to him. And so it then brings up the question of saying, now, are these people really working for Pakistan or against Pakistan? And that by extension, is the PTI behind all this, which I think is obvious that they are obviously working to get some reprieve for Imran Khan. And so it becomes very messy. Yeah. So I guess to summarize, yeah, there's a demand by the UN Working Group to say he shouldn't be in jail. And even interestingly, that he should be given reparations. But then there's that other uh, argument being presented to say, what happened all those other times? And really, uh, with Gaza going on, uh, are there other issues for which the UN has said something and nobody has taken note of? So why is it that Pakistan, a developing country, is being put under that pressure? Yeah. So it engages with different narratives. No, it's true. And as you say, it's a familiar playbook in Pakistani politics. Great to see you as always, Samina. Thank you. Thank you.